Today we're going to talk about dilution calculations. We use this when we want to take a solution of a known concentration and we want to change the concentration and find out either what the new concentration is or what the final volume is. So let's start. The formula can be written as M1V1 equals M2V2 or C1V1 equals C2V2 where M in this case stands for molarity and V is volume and C is concentration. So you can use this, I like, I prefer the C1V1 over C2V2 because you can have solutions with different concentrations, whether it's molarity, whether it's parts per million, percent, uh, volume over vo volume, there are a variety of different concentration units that you can use. So I will use the C1V1 equals C2V2. Let's say, for instance, I've got a 100 ml volumetric flask and I've been instructed to put 25.00 milliliters of 5 molar HCl into it. I would put this into the flask. I would then dilute to the mark in the flask, mix it up. But now I need to know what my new concentration is. So let's apply this and let's assign some values to some of these in the formula. So C1, what do I know? I have a concentration of hydrochloric acid that I'm using, 5.00. Okay, and I know what volume I'm using, so I can assign that to V1. I also know one other thing. I know what my final volume is. Now, I would take and rearrange this equation, and rearranged, this would look like C1, V1, if I want to find out what C2 is, is divide it by and would give me C2. Okay, so now I would plug those values in. 5.00, what's my volume? Divided by my volume. is going to give me an answer. I'm going to stop for a second. We have different units going on here. My final answer is going to have a unit in molarity, as does my initial concentration. And that's fine, because when I do this calculation, my, un my volume units, they cancel out. So my final answer will be 1.25. And if I factor in the significant figures, three sig figs, because my least also has three sig figs. Okay, now for a different example. This, it's called a dilution calculation, but really it's about changing the concentration and determining either the volume, the new volume or the new concentration. So let's say I had 450 milliliters of a calcium solution that contained 45 parts per million of calcium solution. Okay, so now I've got my, I've got my concentration, so I've got my C1 equals 45 parts per million, and I have a V1, which is 450.0 milliliters. Now let's say I put this into a beaker and I boil off 50 milliliters. What is my V2? So if I boil off 50 milliliters, I would take my initial volume, subtract 50, my V2 is now 400 milliliters. Okay, so rearrange this calculation and we have 45 parts per million multiplied by 450 
milliliters divided by 400 milliliters. My final answer is going to be 56.25. Factor in the sig figs. Our least number of sig figs is 2. So 56 parts per million. Again, my units, my milliliters cancel, and my units are parts per million. Okay, let's say you are tasked to prepare two and a half liters of a 0.12 molar solution of H2SO4. So, two and a half liters of 0.12 molar H2SO4. So, you have a sulfuric acid solution that you have to prepare. And you're being told that the concentration of the solution that you're going to use is 16 molar. All right, so now we'll use this calculation. When you see this word, you can assume that those values are going to live on one side of this equation because you know that information about the volume and the concentration. So if I assign C1 0.12, V1, how much am I making? I'm making 2.5 liters of it. C2, the 16 molar, that's what I'm using, and I need to know how much. So this is what I'm looking for. Now, I just want to point out that I'm assigning the known values to C1 and V1 and on the other side of the equation is what I'm calculating either in the past experiment uh, ca calculation was C2, this time I'm looking for V2. It doesn't matter what side you put it on as long as the right information combination goes on the appropriate side. So if I rearrange this to solve for V2, my V2 is going to equal C1 V1 over C2. All right, so now let's plug in these values. I've got 0 0.12 molar times 2.5 liters divided by 16. All right, my final answer is going to be 0 0.01875 liters. This is, if I'm in the lab, um, this value should really be converted to milliliters. So converting it to milliliters is 18.75 milliliters. If we factor in the significant figures, that would be 19 milliliters. Okay, and also pointing out that my units in my calculation, the concentrations canceled and my units are now in volume. Okay, so this is, we've prepared dilute solutions, but we can also say that it's really about the changing in the concentration of a given solution. Now, if you wanted to reduce the volume of a solution and concentrate it, you can also use this calculation. So here's an example where you are given 250 milliliters of a 45 parts per million solution of calcium. And you're told, okay, you need to boil off 50 milliliters of it. So if I incorporate this into my equation and I call this is going to be V1, let's call this C1, and I'm told I have to get rid of 50 milliliters, my V2 would be 50 milliliters less. So, all right. So now I would rearrange that again, and I would be solving for C2. So it doesn't matter if you're diluting a solution, concentrating a solution, you can use this calculation. What the um, important thing is to note though is the dilution calculation can only be used when you're dealing with one solution. You cannot 
use this calculation when you're doing a titration. So with that in mind, only when you're dealing with solutions and you're changing the concentration. So if we finish off this calculation, what are we looking for? We're looking for C2, so we would rearrange this, and C2 is going to equal 250.0 milliliters multiplied by 45 parts per million divided by 200.0 milliliters. And your final answer, if I do the calculation, I'll end up with 56.25 parts per million sig figs, two sig figs, 56 parts per million. And again, my units in my volumes are going to cancel out and leave the parts per million units.